She is the cradle of Western civilization, the birthplace of democracy, art, and philosophy. But construction and excavation threaten to destroy her past. This could have been the disaster of the millennium. One of the largest engineering and archaeological feats in Europe is digging through layers of ancient history, transforming Athens into a 21st century metropolis. Now, the Athens subway on Modern Marvels. Greece. This beautiful mountainous country boasts hundreds of islands and 9,000 miles of shoreline. Athens, her capital, sits on Attica, a peninsula about 40 miles wide and 50 miles long. Ringed by mountains, high-rises share the Athens skyline with crumbling ancient structures. Here, the ancient and modern live side by side. Cars drive past classical triumphal arches that have survived millennia. Over the last 30 years, the population of Athens has doubled to nearly 4 million. One and a half million people live in the dense, busy heart of the city, compounding its long-standing reputation for car pollution. Known to erode the smooth surface of marble, damaging ancient buildings and statues. If you think of the classical antiquities of Athens from the 5th century BC, those antiquities suffered less, really, over 2,500 years than they did in 25 years of automobiles circulating in the city of Athens. Many Athenians struggled to work on Line 1, Athens' antiquated urban train system. It is a single line, which only runs between Piraeus on the coast and Kephissia in the north. Transport in an urban setting is uh, vital to the uh, quality of life of every major city. Athens is not an exception. On top of this daily demand, the return of the modern Olympics to Athens in 2004 created an enormous influx of people who were required to use public transportation to and from the Olympic facilities. Everybody was recognizing the need to improve the public transport system. Everybody knew that this could not be done by constructing more roads. And Line 1 could not cope with the growing demands of a modern city. A modern solution was desperately needed. The modern Olympics, which were reinvented at the end of the 19th century, uh, only exist because there were ancient Olympics. And so in this interesting twist, it's ancient history, the ancient Olympics, that leads to the modern Olympics, that leads to the technological marvel of the Athens metro. The plan called for two new underground lines. Attico Metro's lines two and three would intersect with the existing line one, providing 12 more miles of line and 20 new stations. The original schedule for constructing the Athens Metro when the contract was signed with this French, German and the Greek consortium was for completion by the end of 1997. In 1993, Athens residents watched as the two gigantic tunnel boring machines, or TBMs, nicknamed Metro Mouse, arrived to bore tunnels under one of the densest modern cities in the world. The TBMs would have to dig under some of the most recognizable architecture of the ancient world, through ground containing some of the oldest artifacts of Western civilization. Not everyone was pleased to see them. There was tremendous debate and worry about whether it would work, whether these tunnel boring machines would chew up all of ancient Athens as they made their way uh, underneath the streets of the modern city. Would they just be spitting out the refuse of thousands of years of culture as they inexorably marched toward you know, the next breakthrough? The new lines would form a large cross intersecting in the heart of the modern city, which had been built over layers of the ancient city. Several of the new stations were close to, or even inside, the old city wall, one of the richest archaeological sites in the world. 
since they've been inhabiting the same spot for thousands of years and living in exactly the same place, the archaeological history of Athens has built up like layer upon layer in a cake uh, over the centuries. And, and all you need to do is take a teeny little slice in that cake and you are immediately plunged into centuries, indeed millennia, uh, of riches of archaeology. The careful scientific archaeological excavations carried out during the Metro project give us a window into the ancient civilization. Along with coins, lamps, and pots, water pipes and roads tell us about Greece's engineering feats before it was annexed by Rome in 148 BC. They had roadways with drainage, with surfacing, with tunnels and pipes to take away wastewater and above all to bring fresh water extending over an enormous amount of ground uh, and bringing to the people a quality of life that we never had this kind of physical evidence for in previous times. And so we see uh, how there really was an ancient technological marvel. The modern technology let us see the application of the ancient technology in a way that gives a completely new dimension to our understanding of ancient Athenian life. To build a metro in Athens at the end of the 20th century meant vast tracts of history had to be cut into. The archaeologists would have to perform rescue excavations, working within a limited time frame to map, record, and preserve thousands of artifacts across 18 sites, exposing over 40 square miles of ancient civilization. The obviously is a very uh, difficult marriage between the archaeologists and the engineers. The engineers want to do things as fast as they can. The archaeologists, of course, have their own time frame, which is opposite to the engineers. But the new subway was desperately needed. Stations had to be built, and the Metro Mouse Cutting Heads had to begin tunneling to construct the two new lines for Athens' most recent marvel. The ancient Parthenon took 16 years to complete. Ox carts hauled 22,000 tons of white marble 10 miles from Mount Pantelicon. The Athens subway will continue in a moment on Modern Marvels. At the end of the 20th century, Athens was a chaotic city with no clear urban plan and a struggling public transportation system. But it wasn't always this way. When Greece became an independent nation in the mid-19th century, tremendous efforts went into rebuilding the city while preserving her past. Otto I had been chosen as king, and in 1834, Athens was established as the capital city of a free Greece in honor of her historic greatness. As the king took the throne, a model city plan for Athens was developed. This renaissance in Athens was part of a worldwide classical revival which became known as neoclassicism. One does not have to look very far uh, to see the influence of ancient Greece. The founding fathers were all classical scholars. Neoclassicism was the first truly national architectural style in the United States. It also inspired a revival of the Olympic Games. The first modern Olympiad took place in Greece in 1896, setting in motion the 20th century phenomena of the modern Olympics. Line 1 serviced these early games and continued to grow north, eventually reaching the suburb of Kifisia. The history of Line 1 starts a number of years after the Greek Revolution when the uh, port city of Piraeus needed to be connected with Athens. The first stage of Line 1 was constructed on or just below the surface. It was one of the earliest urban transport systems in the world when it opened in 1869. When the lines first started running, it was running on a single track with steam engines. Slowly, the line expanded further north as it grew into the city, they used the time-honored cut and cover technique also used in Paris and New York. First, a large hole is excavated. Supporting walls are built. Then a roof is constructed before reinstating surface conditions. Towards the end of the 19th century, 
more and more people traveled to Athens to experience her classical glory. But the events of the 20th century overtook Athens' development. She was involved in both world wars and suffered under Italian and German occupation. She then endured a bitter civil war from 1946 to 1949, in which more than one million Greeks were killed. Fighting in rural areas led to a mass migration into Athens, causing social and economic chaos. The explosion of the development started after the Second World War. The government didn't apply uh, many regulations and uh, they, they just uh, let people to build uh, high buildings in the center and uh, that created many problems. This caused an unplanned, dense sprawl of poorly made housing. Late into the 20th century, Greece continued to struggle for stability until democracy was restored in 1974. Today, Greece is a parliamentary republic. The crowded city, a result of its recent past, further complicated the engineering of the new metro project. Lines two and three would radiate out in four directions from Syntagma Square, connecting the suburb with downtown Athens. It was impossible to open up huge cut and cover trenches in the middle of the city. Instead, the existing infrastructure forced Attico Metro to dig some of the central stations from the bottom up. A small service hole was dug through which the giant station cavities were excavated under the bustling city. At interchange stations with Line 1, like Ammonia and Monisteraki, the old stations had to remain open and in operation throughout construction, creating even more of a challenge for the engineers. Outside of the city center, however, most of the new stations could be constructed in the same way as Line 1, using a modern version of the cut and cover technique. An open trench is excavated. The sides are retained by strutted or reinforced concrete pile walls. A waterproof membrane is then laid. Formwork follows. Finally, a slab roof is put in place and the area above is backfilled. These stations then had to be joined by tunnels. Two huge tunnel boring machines, or TBMs, specially designed by Mitsubishi in Japan, have been manufactured in France and were assembled on site. Each TBM was fitted with a 13-foot diameter cutting head, made up of eight spokes with drag bits and single disc cutters. Costing over $20 million, each machine weighs 1,650 tons and is 459 feet in length. TBMs can excavate at depths of 20 to 92 feet below the surface. Deciding the depths of tunnels under Athens was crucial. In building a metro, you always want to make it as shallow as you can be and be in stable ground. Because, of course, the shallower the metro, the cheaper it is to have escalators and elevators and uh, stairways. But archaeologists were worried that tunneling at shallow depths could destroy historical evidence. Antiquities in Athens uh, can occur uh, anywhere between 20 centimeters below uh, the surface of the ground, up to 15 or even 20 meters where the bedrock begins. To avoid buried antiquities, it was decided to operate the cutting heads under Athens at a depth of 66 to 82 feet. The TBM heads can rotate at a speed of 4 RPM and can cut up to 33 feet per day, leaving behind a 30-foot diameter tunnel, which is then supported by a ring of precast reinforced concrete segments, secured with a key segment to form a 28-foot lined tunnel. But the huge TBMs vibrate as they cut through solid rock and have been known to cause subsidence. Subsidence or settlement in building any metro tunnel or even water tunnel, for example, or sewer tunnel, is normal, uh, as long as it kept to a minimum and is monitored very carefully. Archaeologists feared that vibrations could damage the ancient buildings as the TBMs approached the stations at the heart of the old city. The 
The deepest underground system in the world is thought to be the Pyongyang Metro in North Korea. Tunnels are as deep as 393 feet below the surface. The Athens subway will continue in a moment on Modern Marvels. The Athens Metro is one of the biggest engineering feats in Europe and the largest construction project in Greece. By 1995, as the frames of the stations neared completion, giant TBMs began cutting through solid rock to join them together, tunneling under ancient Athens, one of the oldest sites of civilization in the world. The TBM is the preferred really method of tunneling if you can use it. So where you know that you have consistent ground for a long distances. The TBMs are computer operated, electrically powered, and hydraulically driven. Up to 250 men work 24 hours a day, seven days a week to man them in three shifts, contending with incredibly hot and humid conditions. Work only stops when the temperature rises above 100 degrees Fahrenheit. As the cutters break up the soil and rock, the debris is removed via conveyor belts, automatically loaded onto trains, and transported through tunnels to points where it is raised to the surface and taken away for disposal. As TBMs drive through Athens' substratum towards already prepared station sites, their arrival generates much excitement. Each time a TBM breaks into a station with pinpoint accuracy, there are celebrations at its safe arrival. But the extraordinary geological conditions under Athens are very unpredictable. Despite surveys and hundreds of boreholes, in a space of 33 feet, the geology can change from hard rock to soft rock or even shale. Because of this inconsistency, tunneling methods had to be adapted to suit conditions. For a section of Line 2, another machine specially designed to deal with softer rock was brought in. Called an open face shield TBM, it works like a tunnel boring machine, but has much smaller cutting heads attached to it, and a shield to provide initial ground support when tunneling. The open face shield machine is more gentle and more secure uh, method of tunneling, especially in a weaker uh, ground and where you have uh, tunneling going under weak and sensitive buildings. Thousands of years of urban development added to the geological instability. In areas like Panepistimio, landfills and ancient water wells litter the naturally unstable subsoil. When the water vanished from the well, the well had to be filled up. Usually it was filled up with uh, rubbish, with broken pots uh, that were useless for the household. Sometimes when a well was cut into, artifacts cascaded into the tunnel. If and when you discover something, then the involvement of the archaeologists become really the driving force, not the engineers. This ancient debris is a treasure trove. All that became a very important archaeological find, which gives us an insight of everyday life. Because ancient Greeks, like modern Greeks, wanted the new. They wanted the latest. They did not want to use last year's pottery. They wanted to use this year's pottery. The decoration, the shape, the style of the pottery was continuously changing. You can work out the chronological development of these pottery styles. When the archaeologists had finished their work, the engineers moved back in to repair the collapse and minimize any further settlement by pumping concrete deep underground, directly in front of the TBM's cutting head. But in some areas, the threat of subsidence from the TBM and the open-faced tunnel boring machines 
was considered too great a risk for the ancient buildings above. Because of the presence of many beautifully preserved early Christian churches, the tunnel connecting Syntagma Station to Monasteraki Station inside the city wall, and then on to Keramikos, proved the most difficult. The route of this tunnel had already been changed because it went under the Greek Orthodox Cathedral. But the new rerouting then meant the TBM would have to cut under the Byzantine Church of the Kapna Korea, built in the 11th century AD. There it stands in the middle of Athens as a concrete symbol of a thousand years of Christian faith uh, in Greece. Amidst the bustle uh, and congestion and high-rise buildings of modern Athens, there it's a quiet oasis whose art and architecture speak to the long-term continuity uh, of Christianity as such an important part uh, of Greek culture. For this section of tunneling, the engineers resorted to a technique called the new Austrian tunneling method. Developed in the 1960s, this method of tunneling provided a much more controlled environment for tackling particularly difficult ground conditions. The tunnel is constructed by slowly digging out segments of the whole diameter. Each segment is then supported with steel arches and reinforced with wire mesh sprayed with shot concrete and further strengthened with rock bolts. The lining becomes an integrated part of the rock mass and limits subsidence to the highest possible degree. Until the side segments are complete, the center of the tunnel is left alone in order to provide extra support protecting the buildings above. This is then dug away to create an oval tunnel. Using the new Austrian method had prevented any major surface damage along this route. However, progress is reduced to 10 to 16 feet of tunnel per day, whereas TBMs can dig up to 33 feet per day. But as soon as the digging began at the Monasteraki station, one of the central station sites being dug from the bottom up, unacceptable levels of subsidence were occurring. Here in the middle of this difficult building site, the 17th century church of the Pantanasa had already suffered extensive structural damage from settlement. Right next to the Agora, the ancient marketplace in classical Athens, the area around the Monasteraki station is still a cramped, bustling market. The old Line 1 station had been built here over a hundred years ago and is one of the interchange stations between Line 1 and the new Line 3 the old station had to remain open and trains in operation throughout construction. Along with difficult geological conditions, the presence of springs and old wells at the site further added to the problems of the engineers. The station of Straki represented uh, probably the greatest challenge for all of us. We actually divided the excavation method into very small steps to ensure that every step uh, is taken with the proper uh, protection. Therefore, that the settlement which we monitor two, three times a day will be kept at absolute minimum. To finish digging the station, the engineers had to resort to more ingenious ways of tunneling. International consultants recommended state-of-the-art micro-tunnel boring machines. They operate like ordinary TBMs, but are significantly smaller. Here they were used to cut an arch of small tunnels, which was then reinforced with steel tubes. This umbrella of tubes was then bolted together and filled with concrete to secure the surface before excavating the station area beneath. Despite using micro TBM technology, there was still enough settlement here to force engineers to reduce the size of the station. The archaeologists had grave concerns about tunneling in any form under ancient Athens. One tunnel even caused an international outcry. To connect Monasteraki to Kerimiko station meant digging a tunnel under the sacred gate of the old city wall and under the ancient graveyards of Kerimikos. Archaeologists were alarmed that vibrations could crack and damage irreplaceable antiquities. With 468 stations, 
the MTA New York City Transit has the most underground stations in the world. The Athens subway will continue on Modern Marvels. Under modern Athens, engineers struggled with a variety of tunneling methods to cut through the unpredictable substratum in building the new lines two and three of the modern metro system. Alongside them, archaeologists struggled to conduct their work. The Ministry of Culture, working hand in hand with the engineers of Attico Metro, had identified key areas of archaeological interest. The areas like Acropolis and Syntagma, uh, what you have to do before you even start the construction, that the archaeologists uh, do what you call uh, archaeological trenches, which is very, very carefully by hand, you expose the surface layer by layer. The Athens Metro excavations are spectacular because they pitted the largest modern mechanical tools against the smallest archaeological implements, tunnel boring machines uh, against the little brushes and picks uh, of the archaeologists. They would have to conduct their painstaking work within the engineer's much shorter time frame. The rescue digs involved more than 50 archaeologists who recorded and researched the areas, assisted by as many as 200 laborers who worked around the clock. In total, 18 sites were excavated, exposing over 213,000 feet of the center of one of the oldest sites in Western civilization. It represents the largest archaeological program ever undertaken in Athens. More than 30,000 movable finds were produced during the project, which cover a time span of 25 centuries, from the 17th century BC to the 8th century AD. Perhaps the most outstanding artifact found in the metro excavations was discovered almost entirely encased in rock. When carefully chipped away, it revealed this beautifully crafted bronze head made in classical Greece in about 480 BC. Very few large bronzes survive from antiquity, even fewer from Greece. It's because bronze was a reusable material, also an expensive one, it tells us a tremendous amount about what public monuments might have looked like in ancient Athens. But he's still got his eyelashes, he's got inlaid copper eyebrows, inlaid eyes survive, it's an unparalleled piece. But the vast majority of the artifacts were more ordinary domestic objects. More than 500 movable finds were displayed in an exhibition in Athens called The City Beneath the City. They are fractions of everyday life and they show items that these people used at home and the playground, at school, in political, religious life or took with them after death. Several of the central station sites were situated on ancient burial grounds just outside the old city wall, where thousands of new graves were uncovered. Ancient Greeks throughout their history always wanted to keep dead away from the inhabited areas. When they had walls, the dead were buried outside the walls. The ancient Greeks generally made tombs for their dead, and stone coffins often preserved their contents intact. In classical times, various religious and civic observances were practiced around burial rites. The Greeks buried the dead with a number of burial gifts, which were meant to suggest who the deceased was in their lifetime. So soldiers are buried with their weaponry, athletes are buried with uh, their athletic paraphernalia, wives are buried with uh, household items, and so on and so forth. Every Athenian uh, was in death the person who were in, in their lifetime. Children who had died were buried with their favorite toys, like these clay figures. Babies with their feeder cups or tiny pots containing food for them to take into the afterlife. The oldest exhibit in this exhibition 
uh, uh, is a pair of pots from the Mycenaean period, dating in about the 17th century BC. They come from the grave of a child in the area of the Acropolis station. This child's burial is unique for two reasons. One, that it belongs to a period of the Bronze Age civilization, which is not well documented, the transition from the Middle Bronze to the Late Bronze or to the beginning of the Mycenaean era. And secondly, that the vases themselves are, are shapes that we normally associate with mature adults. At the Kirameko station site alone, over a thousand new tombs were found. Some graves had more unusual contents, like this one for man's best friend. Pet cemeteries are not a modern invention. This beloved pet was laid out there with his leather collar studded with bronze discs and actual glass perfume bottles uh, in with him, uh, which is surely an expression of the close bond between the family and, and this beloved pet. As the rescue digs came to an end, the bulldozers moved in. New stations and tunnels needed to be built. The most controversial stretch of tunneling to connect Monasteraki Station to Karimiko Station was to be cut under the ancient suburb of Karimikos. In the ancient world, Karimikos was described as one of the most beautiful districts of Athens. It was the potter's quarter, the place from which we get the word ceramic. Located just outside the old city wall in the shadow of the Acropolis, it is the site of the largest and most ancient cemetery yet to be found on Attica. It also bears testimony to one of the most tragic episodes in ancient Greece, a plague that devastated Athens in 430 BC during her war with Sparta. The great war that Athens fought with Sparta brought them behind their walls for defense, uh, and a great epidemic struck them. Uh, this disease killed thousands and as the excavation shows, led the Athenians to pile the corpses one on top of each other uh, in these uh, communal graves, uh, giving up their traditions of individual burial uh, because the tragedy was so overwhelming. The Greeks did not usually practice mass burial, but during the plague, wrote the Greek historian Thucydides, the Athenians were so sure that the end of the world was coming that they left their dead in the streets. Potentially, through DNA analysis, we might be able to settle some questions regarding the nature of this plague itself. What was the disease that carried off uh, these citizens? We have descriptions of the symptoms in Thucydides. There has been a lot of speculation about what the actual disease was. But since we now actually have the bones of citizens that died as a result of this plague, we might, in fact, be able to pinpoint what precisely the nature of it was. Originally, a TBM was to have cut beneath the ancient fortifications, under the bed of the Eridanus River, which in classical times ran out of the city beside the sacred gate and on under the ancient graveyards. This plan caused a storm of opposition from archaeologists, who were concerned that the tunneling could damage irreplaceable antiquities. As a concession, and to ensure that uh, there is not even slight possibility of any damage to the ancient cemetery, we agreed with the archaeologists to proceed using these new uh, Austrian tunneling methods, which is much more careful and gentle uh, method of tunneling. But still, the archaeologists were not satisfied. Attico Metro finally agreed to reroute the tunnel. But to connect to Kerimiko Station, which was already under construction, they would still have to cut under a corner of the cemetery. And that corner was below the Street of Tombs, in the Kerimikos neighborhood containing important pieces of classical funerary art. The ancient sources tell us it was the most beautiful suburb of Athens. Um, it was also the place uh, where Athens commemorated its war dead, where the national memorial of the fallen soldiers uh, was located, and where many tombs with beautiful works of art uh, were placed. Uh, it was a sacred place of commemoration. The Greek, French, American, and German archaeologists joined hands to oppose the tunnel under the cemetery. The European Union stepped in, and by April 1998, the Greek government called a halt to tunneling under the cemetery. The Kerimiko station was abandoned. 
In planning any project in an ancient city, you have to plan considering the impact of the archaeology. So we added a 12 months to schedule to allow for uh, such activity. But Attico Metro now believes that the archaeological digs delayed the project by up to two years, at a cost of nearly $50 million. Behind schedule and plagued by delays, the engineers struggled to complete the base project in time for the new millennium. At 33 and a half miles long, the Seikan Tunnel in Japan is the world's longest railway tunnel. The Athens subway will return on Modern Marvels. After more than seven years of construction, excavating 12 miles of tunnels and 20 new stations, alongside the largest archaeological rescue dig in Athens, the Athens Metro was nearly ready. Blessed by the Archbishop and opened by the President and the Prime Minister, the first stage of Athens' new metro was finally open on January 29, 2000. Throughout the nearly $2.5 billion project, over 2 million cubic feet of concrete and 62.5 tons of structural and reinforcing steel were used. One of the disadvantage of building metros, that underground especially, that people do not see any development in the surface. So when we finally opened, every Greek came to celebrate the moment. Tickets were free for the first weekend, and over 900,000 people used the metro over those two days. That's one in 10 of the population of Greece, The decision was made to incorporate finds from the excavations into the designs of the stations at that site. The idea to present some of the exhibits, either in the original or in uh, copies in reproduction, in the, the, the stations, uh, was very welcomed by uh, the people who use the metro. People saying that we don't have a museum within a metro, but a metro within a museum. These are, in a sense, the most successful public outreach programs because they brought the culture, the, uh, these museums, to the people. And uh, it gives a sense of continuity to reassure the Athenian, but also the international public, that no damage was uh, suffered to the remains of the past uh, during the project. More than 400,000 people use the new metro daily, effortlessly transporting them around the center and out into the suburbs. Trains run for 18 hours a day between 6 a.m. and 12 p.m. In rush hour, trains run every three minutes and every five to 10 minutes in non-rush hour. As people change lines by walking along these impressive marble corridors, they can enjoy not only ancient artifacts, but modern art too. The new metro system is not the biggest or the deepest, but mile for mile, it's very effective. It will benefit the city and the people of Athens in many ways. 140 million tickets were sold in its first year. And as more and more people leave their cars behind, or at the specially designed park and ride stations, it will significantly reduce toxic emissions in the city and improve air quality. Now that there's a metro, the air has cleared. You can see all the way to the sea at the Piraeus. You can see the Acropolis all the time. We have documented that the metro have reduced the pollutant in the environment by as much as 15% the number of pollutants will be decreased further as the metro expand to the out suburbs. But even this extended metro is only the beginning. It will not solve all of Athens' pollution and congestion problems. It is very important to take measures in the surface of the city. And uh, this kind of measure are, for example, the creation of a network of tram. Because tram takes uh, room from the car as do other forms of surface transport like buses. 
Athens already has the largest fleet of gas-powered buses in Europe. For the 2004 Olympics, Athens linked archaeological sites through leafy pedestrian routes between the ancient marvels at its center. It is partly because of the metro that the ancient spectacle of the Olympics returned to Greece. The base project was already 60% under construction when it was included in the initial Olympic bid and helped Athens secure the 2004 Games. The extended metro was at the heart of the Olympic master plan. The 2004 Olympics pushed through the completion of a new airport and direct road and rail links with Central Europe. The Athens Metro project is currently working on its first phase of extensions, which will be gradually rolled out between 2004 and 2007. The extensions include nearly nine miles of underground line and 12 new stations. But undoubtedly, the greatest achievement of the Metro has been to enable a unique exploration into Athens' archaeological heritage. Although the, uh, the project for the construction of the Metropolitan Railway was a great, great challenge for uh, the archaeologists working in Athens, it also provided a very rare opportunity. I don't think anyone would have uh, agreed for a proper excavation in the heart of Athens and Syndagma Square, for example, if it wasn't for something like uh, the Metro project. In a modern city where um, facilities, work in facilities for the general public have to be done, there is always a, a balance between the uh, needs of the public and the scientific uh, investigation. This marriage between progress and preservation has led to the discovery of thousands of everyday artifacts of extraordinary value, scientifically preserving the lives of everyday people of the past. There hadn't been these TBMs, tunnel boring machines, then there wouldn't have been any subway. If there hadn't been any subway, there wouldn't have been this massive archaeological project, the largest ever in Athenian archaeology. And if there hadn't been this massive archaeological project, then there wouldn't have been this flowering of knowledge uh, about the life of the Athenians over thousands of years. The opening of the system was the proudest moment for all of us when you see the acceptance of the Greek public and you see also the, the joy and the pride of the average Greek in having such a metro given to them for a generation. It gives a, a pledge that progress uh, does not always mean the destruction of the, of the past. When excavation started in Athens during the 19th century, everybody was excited about the past. And so you get neoclassical architecture, a kind of renaissance. I think the same thing's happening again now with the opening of the metro. Everyone's excitement is renewed about the antiquities. Throughout history, Western civilization has been continually informed and inspired by the ancient Greek world and its love of beauty and wisdom. At the height of Athens' golden age, Pericles remarked, What I desire is that you fix your eyes every day on the greatness of Athens and fall in love with her. Mighty indeed are the marks and monuments of our empire which we have left. Future ages will wonder at us as the present age wonders at us now.